Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. In a previous odds and ends video, I showed this Baldor buffer that I picked up at auction. It looks a little rough from all of the surface rust and it's missing some pieces to hold on the buffing wheels. But being that it's a Baldor, I expect it to be in good mechanical order. I did uh, wire up a plug on it and made sure it was wired for low voltage three phase and it did start up pretty easily and it sounded pretty good although I think I'm going to replace the bearings anyway. I don't expect this is going to take a whole lot of effort but I figured I'd show what I did anyway for somebody who might have something similar that they might want to tackle. Well, there's a junction box here that's mounted on the back of the base. I want to go ahead and remove the cover and disconnect any of the feed wires. Well, it looks like whoever had this before used wire nuts to attach the motor wires to the power lines, and I personally don't like that approach. I prefer to use uh, nuts and bolts and then tape everything up. Although I don't expect this machine to vibrate all that much, I still think that wire nuts are an unnecessary risk for an industrial machine. I will say whoever put these on must have had gorilla strength because I can't get them off. So be the risk in this specific circumstance isn't so bad but I'm just gonna cut them off anyway and make my life a little bit easier <clears throat> with those wires now disconnected I can detach this junction box from the back of the base Well, these four little feet also hold on and cover, so I'll take those off so I can expose the bolts that hold the motor body to the base. Well, I think before I remove the motor from the base, it would be smarter for me to disassemble the bearing caps and the end bells and pull the rotor out of the stator while it's still on a stable platform. doesn't look like there is a wavy washer under this bearing cap. Maybe it only goes on one side. I'm not sure. The four tie rods that hold the end bells to the motor body can come off next.
with the tie rods removed, I can now use this brass hammer or maybe a brass punch to tap off the end bells over the bearings. I think the best approach is going to be to tap this arbor and bearing out through the other end and that does make quick work of it and now that end bell will just tap off the motor base. Pulling the rotor and arbor out is next. I just want to be easy that I'm not dragging it too hard across the inside of the stator. The last little bit of disassembly is going to be to remove the bolts that hold the motor body with the stator in it off of the base. I want to clean up the surface rust on the arbor here, so I'm just going to chuck it up into the south bend lathe, putting it in the three jaw chuck, and then holding it steady on the other end with the live center and the tailstock. I'm going to be replacing these bearings, although I don't have a way to do that in my shop. I don't have a press big enough to pull these off or any, any real way to do that. So I'm not worried about rust getting in and affecting the bearings. So we'll just spin up the lathe here and use some foam sanding blocks and some emery paper to try to get as much of the surface rust off and give it a little better appearance. Well, while I am waiting to take this arbor down to the rail yard to use the 25 ton press down there, we'll go ahead and prep up all of these other parts and get a nice coat of primer and enamel paint on them. We'll do that off camera. Well, since I don't have a hydraulic press in my shop, I brought the arbor down to the rail yard. I'm using a 25 ton press here that makes light work of pressing the bearings was off of the arbor. Was was also used in the a Christmas one. Was for, for, for that. Well, as easy as it was to press off those bearings, it was even easier to push on these bearings and even easier to make a near fatal mistake. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, the trigger on the hydraulic pump is a little more sensitive than I thought, and I ended up pushing the arbor through the rotor about an inch, and it actually broke the welds that hold the arbor in place. And the big mistake I made here was not lowering the press table and putting the arbor just 
straight onto the bottom of the press table. Instead, I shouldered the rotor between two press plates. And since I shouldered the rotor on those press plates, the other thing I screwed up is I pretty much smashed all of the little aluminum fins that make up the makeshift fan that are on the edges of the rotor. I'm hoping that in itself won't be a major problem, but we'll see first whether or not I can get this arbor pushed back in the other direction in the right location. Dumb, 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 dumb. Well, and even if I do manage to push this arbor back through the other way, I'm likely going to damage the little spline fan thingamajigs on the other side of the rotor. Well, I think that will work as far as the position of the arbor and the rotor, but I'll have to take this back home and retack those welds and see if I can't do anything about those splines. I can weld that back up. Well, the splines are in a little rough shape, but I think they'll probably be okay. Um, there's really not much more I can do with them. I could probably build up some aluminum on them, but I don't know how much wackier I'm going to get it out of balance. But we'll go ahead and retack the arbor here to the rotor in a clean spot, and that should be good enough. I'll put a couple of tacks on, on each end, and that should be good enough to hold it in position. Well, I think I'm done screwing this thing up. Hopefully none of these mistakes are fatal. I guess we'll find out. But it's time to start putting this thing back together. And we'll start by remounting the stator to the motor base. After pulling the wires through the motor base, I can go ahead and take that junction box and remount it to the back. Next, I can take the rotor and arbor and slide it into the stator. And now I can slide on the right side end bell and try to get it oriented and over that bearing. This is going to be a little tricky to get this all assembled and, you know, the, with the arbor centered appropriately. So I think what I'll try here first is to install the right side bearing cap and see if that will give me a little bit of help in getting everything aligned.
with the right side sort of temporarily in place I'll slide on the end bell for the left side and try to tap it in place with a plastic hammer. And I think I can use the tie rods here to try to pull everything together. I'll get the nuts started on each of them and slowly work my way around until they're tightened up and the end bells are seated in the motor body. Everything seems to spin good on those new bearings, so next we can get it rewired. Like I stated before, I don't like using wire nuts in these machines, so what I'll start with is cutting off the wires here because I can't get these wire nuts off. I know it seems to be a little bit ironic that I'm removing these things because I don't want them to come loose and I can't get them loose but it's what I'm going to do and we'll go ahead and strip off the ends here and then crimp on some uh, ring connectors With those ring terminals now crimped on, I'll use a bolt, a lock washer, and a nut to securely tie them together. I didn't have any shorter bolts, so these long ones, I'm going to go ahead and use a zip wheel to cut them off to length. And I'll wrap this whole thing up with some Scotch 3M 33 plus electrical tape. This is a really good adhesion. And then I'll overwrap that with just some standard electrical tape. We'll do the same thing to the other three connections off camera. Well, with the ground wire attached to the back of the electrical box and the incoming power lines attached to the other junctions, we can go ahead and fish this through the conduit connector there and close up this box. 
I'll finish attaching the armored conduit to this as well as wiring up the power switch off camera. I'll also go ahead and get it mounted back onto the pedestal. With all the wiring now reconnected and mounted on the pedestal, I can go ahead and install some new wheels I have for the buffer. On the right side here, I'm going to use a deburring wheel. It's kind of like a scotch Bright wheel, but just cheaper. I only had two of these big washers that are used to sandwich the polishing or buffing wheel. So um, I bought a couple more off of eBay, but these were for a 5 8 arbor, and the arbor on mine is 3 quarters of an inch. So I needed to modify these slightly by opening up the center hole. With those two washers modified, now I can mount the polishing wheel on this left side. Well, now we can go ahead and turn it on and give it a test. And you can notice here that the nut on each of these arbor ends just unscrewed themselves. And what that tells me is I put the arbor in backwards. So now I need to disassemble this thing again and switch this around, at least partially disassemble. So now I gotta go ahead and remove the wheels, remove the bearing caps, remove the end bells, and pull this thing out so I can switch it around. I'll speed up that process a little bit for you so you don't have to wait through all of it. Yeah, it's never a good day when your buffer decides to disassemble itself. So now that I've got that turned around correctly, I should have noticed that to begin with. I guess uh, I learned something today. Uh, it's really quiet. The bearings sound good in it. As a matter of fact, the most of the noise you're hearing is really the rotary phase converter. This thing is super quiet. Well, I've always wanted to have a standalone deburring station, and this is going to fit the bill real nicely. I've been swapping one of my bench grinders from a wire wheel to a deburring wheel for the better part of a couple of years, and so this will be nice to have in the shop. And it's nice and quiet, 
and has quite a bit of power to it. I appreciate you watching along. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, consider joining my Patreon page. There's a link in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.